liner, and the Orioles are the world champions. I'm Lisa Shampo. And I'm Bob Sikora, just back from Philadelphia. We're here live at Memorial Stadium with the fans, and we'll have that story in just a moment. Thank you, Lisa and Bob, and how sweet it is today. There's other news, too. And after the game, Baltimoreans were, and still are, going crazy over the Orioles' victory in the World Series. And the Greenpeace protests go on in Baltimore. Good evening, I'm Frank Luber with Ronnie Duncan and Ron Riley with live team coverage from Memorial Stadium on our World Champion O's, plus all the other news of the day. Eyewitness News is next. Good evening, everyone, and what a good night it is indeed. They did it. The Baltimore Orioles are the world champions of baseball. Eddie Murray's two home runs helped the O's to a 5-0 win over the Phillies, with Rick Dempsey getting the most valuable player of the series award. The O's did it in five games and come back to Baltimore tonight, the winners. And waiting for the Orioles to return to Memorial Stadium, Thousands of people, including Lisa Shampo and Bob Sokola. And Lisa and Bob, we understand, according to the city police, they're expecting perhaps 40,000 people at Memorial Stadium this evening. 40,000 is right, Frank. They're all here in the parking lot of Memorial Stadium, just waiting for the birds to arrive. You can hear the shouts of Dempsey, Eddie, and the Orioles. With me, of course, is Bob Sokola, just back from Philly. I'll tell you, it was a fabulous trip back. We came back on Amtrak with about 150 fans. We'll talk about that a little later. But Lisa, what's been going on here? I haven't been here for about three days. What's happening? Bob, just seconds after the Orioles clinched the series, it was like this all over Baltimore. The fans went wild. The same here in Fells Point. What'd you win? Two hundred dollars. Why? The bird. Bird, you bet them? Certainly. Who is there? Anybody else? You better believe it. About, about 10 minutes, we went through 20 bottles. How many bottles in 10 minutes? Yeah, about 20 bottles. I just wish the country was as good of a shape as the Orioles, and we could take the deficit. <laughs> station just seconds ago and that literally seconds ago the streets 33rd street is a massive traffic jam right now people obviously blowing their horns lighting sparklers screaming and yelling if you had any plans of coming over here you might as well just stick it out wait at home and we'll be back with that and much more when the rows arrive from philadelphia they're coming down by bus as i said by train and made here a little bit faster than they did but we'll be here throughout Thank you very much, Lisa. And I'm sure there are a lot of people going to be calling in sick tomorrow, and those have used up all their sick days. Well, at least they have one dead day left. That was Bob Sokola and Lisa Shampo live at Memorial Stadium. And a reminder that we'll be going live from the stadium when the Orioles do arrive here this evening. City police are to pick up the Orioles bus on the Beltway at I-95 at 11.15 p.m., we understand, just about 10 minutes from now, meaning the Orioles should be arriving at Memorial Stadium in about a half an hour and we'll be going live to the stadium when they do and just like all Orioles fans Lou Tilly was on the edge of his seat literally in Philadelphia when Scott McGregor made the last pitch of the game today a 
liner, and the Orioles are the world champions. And so it was written on October 16th, in the twilight of the day, that the Orioles defeated a team in the twilight of their years and became the world champions for 1983. It's a big thrill for us, and I'm glad that I uh, have a little part in this organization to contribute to win. We tried to win the, uh, the fifth game in 1979, and Mike Flanagan pitched a great game. We ended up losing 2-1, to one, and then the next night we didn't get any runs, and the, the seventh game we didn't get any runs. So today we just wanted to go out and do the same things we've done all year. A typical win it was, but the stereotypical locker room scene, it was not. But this is by no means your stereotypical professional sports champion team of the 80s. It's just great to, to have won a world championship, and and I think you really saw what to make the Orioles go this, this year today. Uh, you saw Eddie Murray helping out, and you saw guys making clutch plays, and, and you saw the excellent pitcher, uh, pitching of a Scotty McGregor. And, and that's been the ingredients all year that have enabled us to be successful as we are. That sounds not unfamiliar to those of you back home, I'm sure. Now I'll have more on the game and the Orioles' reaction later in sports. But for now, from the clubhouse of the world champion Baltimore Orioles, I'm Lou Tilly, Channel 13, Eyewitness Sports. Thank you very much, Lou. And no matter where they happen to be, the Orioles fans in this area were keeping abreast of the World Series action. And for about three hours today, it was as though nothing else mattered. Take this Orioles fan. He carried a portable TV with him throughout the series and never missed a play. Here's the runner, Maddox, at third. Leading five to nothing, uh, what do you think the outcome will be? Oh, the Orioles are going to win it, naturally. I said that to begin with. No sixth game, then? No sixth game. When they come home, they're going to come home for good. That's it. The Phillies ain't coming with them. Those who didn't watch the game on television kept up with the championship-bound birds via radio. Here we go to the last half of the sixth inning, and the Phillies with the top of the batting order coming up. Big day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Had the radio on all day? Just about. Wherever you go. Huh? Right. <laughs> I understand that you've got yourself a blazer here, but a baseball version of the blazer, right? Right. Let me hear what it goes like. All right. And of course, here's McGregor's offering. Here's a pop-up. My goodness, that sounds pretty good. Anything else? Sure. <laughs> Charge, right? <laughs> and this is for the Phillies. Those who didn't catch the final game of the series at home saw it up there home away from home, the local watering hole. And after 171 games, we're down to the final out, the final strike. There it is. The Orioles are World Series champions. any doubts in your mind at all. Oh, no, how sweet it is. Indeed it is, as the great one used to say. <laughs> and those celebrations continue tomorrow as Baltimore honors the birds with a parade. The ticker tape extravaganza begins at noon at Mount Vernon on Charles Street. The parade then goes south on Charles, east on Baltimore, north on Holiday, and ends up at City Hall. The parade includes all the birds, the mayor, the governor, Wild Bill Higgy, the Oriole Bird, Section 34, probably Section 35, 36, and all the rest of the sections, too. The stadium ground crew, ushers, vendors, and 35 bands. Did we leave anyone out? <laughs> Parade officials expect participants to start forming at 9 a.m. at Charles Street and Center Street. Of course, we'll have live coverage tomorrow at noon on Eyewitness News right here on Channel 13. Well, we come back to tales on the death of another Marine in Lebanon, and the environmental group Greenpeace is at it again, so stay with us. Murray drills it to deep right field, and the one thing about Murray is when he breaks out of a slump, he really does it. And it was mentioned in the booth, Howard said it, in the last ball game, it looked like Eddie when we come back, Ron Riley is here with the Oriole Victory Parade weather for tomorrow and AccuWeather highlights as well when we return. It's a deep left field. Matthews going all the way back and Dempsey has hit it out. I wonder how many people were expecting that. Tomorrow in Baltimore, welcoming home the Orioles. And when we come back, Ronnie Duncan joins us with details of our World Series heroes. So stay with us. A 
liner, and the Orioles are the world champions. Imagine them just as easily coming to the office at 8 a.m. instead of 8 p.m. You can see them in dungarees, t-shirts, and hard hats as easily as pinstripes, spikes, and brightly colored caps. It is the World Championship Trophy, and here in the O's locker room, immediately following the clinching victory in Philadelphia, the mood is what you might expect. Not so much exuberance, but a quiet self-satisfaction of a job very well done. The thing about this team, in 1979, we thought we were really neat because we could play baseball. In 1983, we're, we know we're blessed with the talent to play baseball, so why not go out and, 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 and give the fans what they pay to deserve? And, and they deserve it. The team deserves it. The city of Baltimore deserves it, and I'm just proud to to be a part of it. No stooge, this dour fellow. And it would be remiss to separate any three members of this team from the rest anyway. Well, you could have split it. I didn't care 25. if they split it, if they gave it to anybody else on the team. I didn't care one way or the other. I just wanted to win. Going into today's game, I just said, I don't care. You know, somebody said, well, you got a chance to win. Or Earl Weaver came and said, you got a chance to win MVP. I said, I'll go for four as long as we win. I don't really care. Thank God I was able to contribute tonight. It's a great honor to be MVP. But, you know, I'm just glad that we won the World Series. It Joe Morgan and Al Holland showed the class of their National League championship ring. I just want to let the guys know that I hope they win again next year, and because we're going to win next year, and we'll be back and have a rematch. But in truth, Al Bunbury was one bird chirping foul at series end. You know, I just don't think, you know, with some guys that just didn't give our pitch staff any credit for the job that they had done. Benny Ayala told me, too, before the game, I had it on the top of my locker. Benny told me, he said, Todd, don't keep him on top of your locker. Because he said, Dollar had his on his locker. He took it off, and he got three hits. He said, Todd, take it off. I said, I'm not superstitious. Well, I went over four. <laughs> he was right, you know. But, hey, but, we, but, hey, but I, called, I called and made my plays, and we won. You know? we're, we're, we're number one. From Veteran Stadium with a championship team, it's been my pleasure. Lou Tilly, Eyewitness Sports. I tell you, Lou, it's been mine, too. We did it in five. Everyone go out and celebrate, enjoy it, and God bless the Orioles. And the celebrating will continue tomorrow, too, at the, of course, with the big parade in downtown Baltimore beginning at noon. And Ron Riley says we're going to have excellent weather for, for it. And for one last look at the crowd forming to welcome home the O's back again to Memorial Stadium, where Lisa Shampo and Bob Sokola are standing by live. Frank, every time Bob and I look around the parking lot here at Memorial Stadium, four people keep pouring in. The birds haven't arrived yet. They're expected to arrive momentarily. Bob, just back from Philly. I brought with me a fanatic, which we can uh, turn upside down. For you. The bird. Also, it is my to stop. Don't waste that stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob and Lisa. That's our report for the moment for the entire Eyewitness News team. I'm Frank Luber, back next weekend.